Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehaas. And in this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest comics for the week of September 9th. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect switches between hottest comics and trending comics. This week, we got Hottest Comics, which is the top five hottest selling comic books based on volume of sales and movement in the market. So think of these books as the five most liquid last week. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, helps for the channel, doing all those things I would appreciate. But let us get into this article here today. Of course, I will put a link in the description, like I always do, like I always always give my Monday breakdowns. You guys know the drill at this point, uh, but let's start here at the number five spot. And this one is a very cool one to talk about. One that was actually on the hot list not too long ago, but this one is the Sandman number eight, up 27 spots, now sitting in the 26th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1989, written by Neil Gaiman, that would feature the first appearance of the character known as Death. Now, Death, as I'm sure you guys all know, is one of the main characters in the Sandman franchise, you know, kind of the antithesis of sort of that Grim Reaper character, much like dream, you know, death is kind of a, you know, not so evil of a figure, kind of a charismatic being in the Sandman universe. And we all know that the Sandman books have been moving quite a lot in the market due to the success of the Netflix show. But one of the interesting things that has come out recently about the Sandman show is that it is uncertain whether or not they're going to be getting a season two. And that has a lot of, you know, Sandman holders kind of concerned out there in the market. I mean, it's not that the show hasn't been received really well. I mean, most people you talk to uh, actually are pretty fond of what they've been doing with season one so far. But the problem is, is that this is such an expensive endeavor for Netflix that they have to be able to justify it with the viewer count. And, you know, no one's actually going to know how many people are watching the season. But, you know, based on what is going on and what's being talked about in the news, maybe it's looking like the viewership doesn't justify the actual bill that they're spending for the show. But if they do end up canceling the show, that would probably cause a lot of people to sell in the market. And that's probably what's happening now. You know, people are either buying at this book, uh, you know, because they're excited about the future or people might be selling it because they're thinking, hey, you know, if, if it's in jeopardy that we're going to be getting a season two, uh, I don't want to be caught left holding the bag. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here at some of the values. Uh, 9.8s have 314 on the census. Fair market value is 900. 30 day moving is 930. So definitely a book that had a slight spike up from the height of the show. But as you can see, this is one that like many others had a massive spike in 2021 and has been kind of on the slow, steady decline. But where it kind of sells right now is kind of, you know, in line to the trend at least, uh, you know, when we're thinking about the Bronze Age and Silver Age. Now, I haven't done my Copper Age index yet, so I don't necessarily know how we would uh, kind of calculate the trend line for the Copper Age books, like this one right here. Um, but it does seem like a pretty decent buy-in if you're somebody who actually is a fan of this book and you want to kind of hold it for the near to short term. Uh, 9.8, you know, it's only the top 13% at the 9.8 grade, so not easy to find this one at this grade level, uh, you know, due to that black cover, a lot of opportunities for color breaks. Uh, and of course, it's a 1980 books, so we're not going to see it slabbed at the low grade. But when you go into eBay looking for raw copies, typically you can see them being sold around the 200 to 250, maybe $300 range. All right, let's move on now to the fourth hottest comic of the week. And the fourth hottest comic of the week is one that is very cool to talk about because this was actually a book that showed up on our trending comics list. But this one, of course, is Incredible Hulk number 181, up 31 spots, now sitting in the 38th slot. And what is the significance of this? Do I do the same joke two weeks in a row? Well, yes, I do. This is the second appearance of Wolverine. No, I'm just kidding. This is the first full appearance of Wolverine and the first cover appearance of Wolverine, uh, one of the top Bronze Age books in all of the market, everyone's favorite X-Men character, uh, of course, a book that came out in 1974, written by Len Wein. Now, like I mentioned, this is a book that actually showed up on the trending list the other week, and I think it was doing so well, had enough sales that it found its way onto the hot list. You know, of course, the trending list is a more curated one, whereas the hot list is truly the top five most sold books in the market. And like I was saying in that uh, particular video when it was on the trending list, uh, one of the reasons why I think this book has had a spike up is due to the fact that, you know, we had that little Easter egg in the She-Hulk show that made mention of a man with claws, you know, in a bar fight, which was clearly a nod to Wolverine. Now, that's not to necessarily say that we're actually going to be getting Wolverine in the MCU anytime soon, but, you know, every little Easter egg, every little hint is going to have some kind of ripple in the market, and it seemed like that was enough to get, you know, a few extra people to make those purchases on Incredible Hulk number 181. Uh, some of the other interesting things about this book is that we actually did have a massive sale for this book at the 9.8 grade. Uh, not too long ago did this book uh, break the six-figure plateau, and, you know, we had another 9.8 sale actually uh, destroy that previous sale, selling around, you know, the $130,000 range. We'll take a look at it here together very soon. Uh, some other interesting things about this book, you know, certainly it's one that at the high end is going to be able to maintain its value. You know, 
know, when you're in that top 10% of a certain book, it's always going to be an investment level grade. Uh, but a lot of the other books, you know, kind of in the mid and low grade uh, are still kind of finding their floor, finding their correction values. And this is a book, you know, because of its popularity, hasn't quite hit the trend line uh, as I would think that it would, you know, based on my, you know, calculations for the Bronze Age Index. And I would actually suspect that this is probably going to be a book that still cools off at the low and mid grade levels. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that we're going to see Wolverine soon in the MCU? I kind of have a feeling that we're not really going to see this character outside of X-Men uh, 97, the animated show, uh, at least until Secret Wars. I think that they'll probably bring in Hugh Jackman at that point, And then the Wolverine that we get for our MCU is probably going to be coming after the multiverse saga. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. Of course, there is one 9.9 .9 on the census. Would be very cool to see what that one would sell for. Definitely a million dollar book. Uh, but as you can see here, there was a heritage auction just actually a couple days ago that sold for $138,000. You can see the previous record for this book was $102,000. So definitely a pretty big spike up for the value of this thing in a very uh, you know short amount of time. Uh, you know Somebody instantly gained $36,000 of equity on their book, uh, but very, very cool to see that, you know, repeating its six-figure sales. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other values here. 8.0 is 1,000 on the census, $7,500 fair market value, 30-day is 7,800. And then if we go down here to say the, you know, 4.5 grade, uh, we can take a look and see, you know, where this book has been kind of correcting to. Obviously, it had its big shoot up like every book in 2021, and it's kind of like hovering at this price point right now at the 3,250 level, which is above the current trend line for this thing. So it'll be interesting to see if these books do actually correct in line to the trend line. Uh, they're still probably a little bit hot, uh, which makes sense because this is a, you know, the, the probably the most popular uh, character outside of Spider-Man out there in Marvel comic books. But, you know, I think eventually it will still cool down at the mid grade. Uh, and then of course at the bottom, you know, you can find low grade slab copies of this thing. But if you want to go onto eBay looking for a copy for yourself, you're going to be hard pressed to find it selling for less than, you know, $2,500 to $3,000. All right, let's go on now to the third hottest comic of the week. And the third hottest comic of the week is a very cool one to talk about. One that has been on the decline for quite some time. But this one here is Amazing Spider-Man number 361, newsstand edition, up 39 spots, now sitting in the 52nd slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1992, written by David Micheleni, that would feature the first appearance of the character known as Carnage. Now, of course, you guys know this book, a book that absolutely blew up during 2021. You know, all of the stars were aligned for this one. Uh, you had the height of the comic book market. You had the Venom movie that featured, you know, Carnage in it. So this book absolutely went to the moon. Uh, but ever since that movie, you know, this one has had a really drastic correction. But, you know, this is one of those books I think is really interesting to talk about because of the fact that, you know, I think at least in the direct edition versions, uh, it's probably overcorrected for where it should be. Now, like I mentioned, I haven't done my Copper Age Index yet, so it's sort of hard for me to determine where it should be in terms of its value. Uh, but, you know, currently it's selling at 9.8 levels around kind of the, you know, prices that it was going for in 2019 and 2020. So if you're somebody who just likes this book, I mean, this is such a great cover. It's a classic Copper Age book. Carnage is a character that's going to be around for a very long time. I'm sure at some point he'll return in the Venom universe. I'm sure at some point we're going to see him again in comic books, you know, having some kind of event crossover thing. So Carnage is a A-tier character. And I think this book is going to be a classic for many years to come. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. 9.8s for the new stands have 210 on the census. Fair market value suggests to be 650, 30 day moving 670. Uh, but this is definitely one that you can see has had a pretty big pullback from 2021, selling you know record high prices around the $1,600 range. I mean, that's a thousand dollar drop off uh, to where it's selling today at $700. Um, but it doesn't seem like a bad entry point if you're someone who likes this book. Then of course, at the low grade, not gonna see it slabbed uh, too often because it's a 1992 book. But if you go onto eBay looking for raw copies of newsstands, typically you can find them being sold around that $125 to $150 price point. All right, let's move on now to the second hottest comic of the week. And the second hottest comic of the week is a very cool one, one that makes sense to be one of the hot comics this week. But this one, of course, is Sensational She-Hulk, number one, up 40 spots, now sitting in the 33rd slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this would be the number one issue that came out in 1989, written by John Byrne, that would kind of establish She-Hulk as sort of that fourth wall-breaking character. Now, 
Now, why is this book hot this week? Well, you guys know we have She-Hulk currently playing on Disney+. Plus. We're about four episodes into it, and this has been one of the books that has been moving a lot in the market. Now, I think She-Hulk has been hit and miss for different people, but that doesn't stop the comic book market from kind of, you know, buying these books and specking on these books. You know, a lot of people talk about how the John Byrne run is their favorite She-Hulk run of all time, so it makes a lot of sense that, you know, a lot of the covers in this particular run are the ones that are being, you know, sought after. But of course, a great book, a lot of sales out there in the market, whether people are trying to buy this thing or people are trying to sell this thing. Certainly everyone is talking She-Hulk and a lot of the She-Hulk books are moving in the market. And it makes sense, you know, if you don't have the budget to get Savage She-Hulk number one, this is definitely a good uh, second option. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. 9.8s have 499 in the census. Fair market value is 200, 30 moving kind of right in line at 206. Uh, but you can see this is a book that much like every other book in 2021 had a big spike up to around the $370 level. Uh, and then it's kind of been up and down, up and down. And of course, 1989 book, not going to see its lab at the low grade, but when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, typically you can see them being sold around that $25 to $30 range. All right, let's move on now to the hottest comic of the week. And the hottest comic of the week is a book that continues to be hot in the market. This is a book that I think has shown up on the hottest comics list, you know, a, a decent amount of times. I feel like every couple months or so we see this book popping up. But this book, of course, is Amazing Spider-Man number 194, up 43 spots, now sitting in the 29 slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1979, written by Al Milgram, that would feature the first appearance of the character known as Black Cat. Now, Felicia Hardy, Black Cat, one of the most iconic Spider-Man anti-heroes. I don't know if you want to call her a villain or you want to call her a superhero, but definitely a character that has been very important to the Spider-Man franchise for quite some time. And there's been so many rumors and talks about, you know, the Sony universe wanting to adapt Black Cat onto the screen. You know, I mean, there's talks of her showing up in the Madam Web movie, but I think it's pretty safe to say that all of the Spider Universe characters are eventually going to make their way into the Sony universe. I mean, if Sony has these properties, they know they have the golden goose, they know they wanna keep making Spider-Man content, and they're gonna use all the characters they can, uh, you know, in their tool belt, and it's only a matter of time before we get Black Cat on the screen in some kind of way. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. 9.9s, there's actually four on the census. Hasn't been a sale since 2014. Uh, I do think that this could be a book that sells for an incredible amount of money uh, if, at the 9.9 grade because it is a full black cover, which makes it very hard to get in the high end. So 9.8s have 466 on the census. Fair market value is 4,000. 30 day moving is 4,200. Uh, but you can see this is a book that definitely had a spike in 2021 has been on a little bit of a correction, but it's still generally pretty high compared to what it was selling for in 2020 and 2019. I think that this grade might eventually start to correct back down, uh, but really hard to say. I mean, it might be able to hold all the way through the film. And then of course, down here at the bottom, I mean, you might see a couple slapped at the low grade, but I would say typically when you go into eBay looking for raw copies, you know, depending on the deal, depending on the grade you can find for yourself, I'd say you're probably still gonna spend around the $200 level, maybe up to the $300 level if you want kind of a nice presenting copy. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Those were Go Collect's hottest comics for the week. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next video.